Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is the first in a series for the overhaul of this. And under all of this snot somewhere is a 1936 Dorman 2RB. Um, this is one of Dorman's first foirés into diesel engines. Um, so it's going to be an interesting rebuild because part supply for these is very, very poor, if not non-existent. Um, so there might be quite a lot of parts that need making depending on what's wrong with the engine. Um, this engine itself is out of a simplex rail locomotive. Um, it belongs to the old kiln light railway. Um, so we're going to get all the snot and muck off of it, move it into the workshop um, and start tearing it down. Okay, so after its initial scrub, uh, here's the engine back in the workshop. So um, we'll crack straight on and start uh, taking it to bits and see what we find along the way. So we're going to start off, uh, get the rubber cover off, um, do things like pull the injectors out and uh, see what we've got. Uh, not a horrendous, um, bit grubby as to be expected, but uh, okay, we'll carry on. So there's our first problem, this thread in the exhaust manifold is stripped. Okay, so no gasket there between the intake and the side of the head. Um, we'll uh, pop these studs out um, and then move on to popping the injectors out on the other side. Okay, so with the uh, manifolds off on the other side, it's over to this side, we'll take the injectors out and disconnect the pipe work bits and pieces. Um, You'll notice these. Now, um, unlike a lot of the engines we do, which are direct injection and don't need any um, additional uh, cold starting aids to get them to go, like the Gardeners and the later Dormans, uh, this engine being so early actually um, needs these to uh, aid with its cold start. So you unscrew these. Uh, and you can put a starting wick in here and light it and you push that back in on both cylinders and that provides essentially like a glow plug would on a modern indirect injection diesel engine to ignite the fuel when the engine is cold. Now, um, we will discuss with the owner as to whether they want to keep it like this or you could actually modify the engine to take modern um, glow plugs here and here, which although not historically correct for the engine would make it more usable because it would be easier to start. So anyway, uh, quickly pop these out and then we're going to get on and take the injectors out. Okay. 
Okay, so now back to doing the engine after getting uh, distracted by a Spitfire doing loop the loops over the top of our workshop. Um, we'll uh, get these injector pipes off and injectors out. On top of the pump. These injectors are the garden hose sprayer attachments. <laughs> <laughs> the latter, probably. I say, um, they did say that the engine was running, um, but they felt that it needed considerable work to be reliable in in service. Oh, so. Okay, so uh, that uh, has certainly seen better days. Um, in a minute, once we've got both out, we'll quickly uh, chuck these on the pop tester and have a look at uh, uh, what they're like in the sense of spray pattern and uh, leaking and that sort of stuff. Okay, and then that one's obviously had uh, some muck down around it as well. So, uh, okay, well, we'll uh, chuck these on the pop tester and um, have a look uh, just how knackered they are. Okay, so we've got one of the two injectors for the doorman uh, up in the uh, pop tester. Um, so what we're looking for is um, decent spray pattern and whether the nozzle leaks and whether that's somewhere close to the lift pressure that we should be seeing for this type of injector. So first of all we're going to bring it up uh, close to its injection pressure and see what we get. Um, you can see the nozzle is leaking quite badly. Um, that's with just a gentle increase of pressure so uh, it's it's leaking. That's not good. Just turn the fan on. Yeah, so that injector is not in good condition, um, it's going to need some work, so we'll check the other one. This is now the other injector of the two, um, again slow increase of pressure up towards its injection pressure and that's about 110 atmospheres um, currently at the moment and it's uh, leaking quite badly. If we do a bit more Rapid increases in pressure, it does inject, but um, the spray pattern isn't great. Um, and if we come across to here, we'll see it's uh, also losing pressure quite quickly. So, um, say that the nozzles in these are quite badly worn. Um, obviously, we'll take them to bits and check them more closely, but um, mm. as a first look, I'd say uh, these injectors need overhaul and probably new nozzles. Okay, so something to pay attention to on uh, some engine models and uh, Dorman's are one of those is uh, for example on a gardener where the injector fits is just a bored hole in the casting so as long as it seals it's fine but on a Dorman like this um, and the LBs we do are the same you can see a copper sleeve here now this actually seals between the injector and the outside world um, but also seals the water jacket. So um, this is pushed in and then swaged outwards to seal it in the cylinder head. So it's important that we check that you're not getting any leaks around uh, where the sleeves seal, both outside and into the cylinder of the engine. Um, if it does, then um, we'll probably have to replace these, these sleeves. Okay, so we've just uh, popped this plate off here, which seals part of the water jacket within the cylinder head. Um, and 
found another little issue. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. Now this is the blanking plate for it, but you can see it's substantially corroded through from the inside out. So um, although there's probably still a couple of millimetres of material here, um, obviously it's nearly, what, four millimetres thick um, originally. Um, so uh, this will probably need a new one making to uh, ensure we don't end up with any pinprick holes uh, through the corrosion here once it's all cleaned up. Okay, so with the uh, rocker shaft and um, the various push rods and bits and pieces in the top end all out, uh, next job is to uh, let the nuts go that are securing the cylinder head and then we can lift the cylinder head off. So a few of these studs are going to need replacing because the thread is uh, stretched on them. So you can see here, the thread is quite badly damaged. So uh, this will need a new stud. Okay, so after fighting to get uh, a couple of the cylinder head nuts off, so like this one here and this one down in here. Um, they'd clearly been uh, fitted and removed a number of times using a chisel. So um, one job that we'll need doing when it goes back together again is all of the nuts that hold this cylinder head down will need replacing. They're all in a pretty poor state. Um, but also taking a bit of a closer look, we can see the top of this valve is uh, quite badly misshaped and there's a big divot in the top of the top of the valve uh, this one's a bit marked up as well but not as bad um, this one's a bit marked up and this one's a bit marked up but um, the most noticeable thing about it all if I can find something to lever it with um, you'll see that the uh, some of the valve guides are In a very poor condition um, lots of sideways play and that's even before we've removed the valve so uh, um, there's certainly going to be some valve work to do so anyway with that looked at we're uh, now ready to lift the cylinder head off so we'll uh, get that off and take a look inside So after a bit of a struggle, because it was a bit stuck on, we've now got the cylinder head off. Um, quite a lot that's going to need addressing between the cylinder head and the engine that we've seen so far. So um, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it on camera and we'll need to measure it to be accurate. But um, these valves seem uh, very recessed into the cylinder head. So I have 
expectation that we're probably going to need to uh, reseat the cylinder head. Um, it would get refaced anyway, but um, probably need new valve seats. Um, you can also see this one here is very oily, so um, I think this one probably leaks quite badly if we were to try and run the engine. Um, other than that, the face of the cylinder head looks okay, um, but there are some quite uh, serious problems with the top of the engine. Um, so, if we come over to the engine itself, um, we have a uh, lovely copper asbestos head gasket, so uh, that's definitely obviously going to need replacing. But also, I don't know if you can see it on camera, let's see if I can get an angle that shows it a bit better. Um, the crown of the piston is actually eroded from where the, in the fuel injects into the cylinder. It's eroded the top of the piston and portion of the side of the cylinder liner. Um, and uh, I expect when we measure up the cylinder liners, they're probably uh, going to need replacement. But we will check that once they're cleaned properly. Um, so at this point in time, um, this engine's going to need... Uh, pistons new cylinder liners and some valve and guide uh, work before it can go back together again so um that's all we have time for today um unfortunately we're a bit busy with uh, the gardner 2lw build which you'll see in another video so this is only a quick one on the start of this one um so uh, see us again next time uh where hopefully we'll be back on to the 2lw if you've enjoyed watching this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.